Hi. I recently needed to probe a QFN chip to examine the ITC traffic on a couple of pins. The method I came up with was to use very thin 0.2mm diameter steel wires crimped with a ferrule at one end and soldered to a piece of scrap copper clad board. It was possible to arrange the wires so that they would touch against the connections on the QFN chip and then I could capture the data on the scope. While this worked, I was curious if there was a more general purpose probing method and I asked on the Element 14 forum and got a load of replies, one of which suggested sense peak probes. They were on sale and I think I got a good deal for a pair of them, 200 MHz versions for a total of £116, all inclusive of tax and delivery. In a nutshell, the probes magnetically clamp onto a metal plate and then they are positioned using gravity to hold the probe against the trace or the edge of a component pin, leaving your hands free to control the experiment or to operate the oscilloscope. There are sense peak bundles with ancillary stuff to clamp PCBs to metal plates as well, but I already had a piece of scrap steel sheet and I glued a thin layer of material on it for insulation and I'll use other clamping methods for now. Here's a demo of how the probe is used. The board here is a square wave generator. It has a 10 MHz output. I've secured it using repositionable putty called Bluetack. The SMA connector here contains the output which goes to channel 2 of the oscilloscope and that's a green trace. I'm going to use the probe to simultaneously monitor the output by taking it from the board as well. Using the probe starts with placing the magnetic base onto the steel sheet and slide it to wherever is convenient. The probe needs a ground connection and I'm using the smallest jumper wire that is supplied with the probe. I'll plug it in here and then connect to a pin header soldered to the ground plane. Now it's simply a matter of moving around the base and the gooseneck, which is very loose, it is not stiff at all, and moving the probe head such that gravity can hold the probe in the right position. It is even possible to have the probe head at a slight angle, i.e. it doesn't need to be vertical because the probe is still constrained to an extent to the locus of movement from the gooseneck, even though that's not stiff so that it can be easily positioned. Now the yellow trace shows the output as seen by the probe. Note that the green trace has changed slightly, and that is perfectly normal because the impedance is no longer precisely 50 ohms, as seen by the SMA connection. For the more difficult scenario, I again tried probing the ITC connections on the QFN chip. This was a bit harder to set up than the square wave generator board, but nevertheless it did save a bit of time compared to the DIY steel wires method that I tried earlier. Also, the probes did not slip, and so I was able to capture the ITC traffic on the scope indefinitely. I'd say that the sense peak probes are quite useful as a result. They're not as fiddly to use as I initially thought they might be. I can see myself using them quite frequently because they will give better results than a normal probe with a clip and ground alligator wire. And although it might not be as good as a normal probe with pointy tip and a spring ground pin, that is normally harder to use because it often needs to be held in place while performing the measurement. With the sense peak probes, I can be hands-free to focus on controlling the oscilloscope and performing the capture. Thanks for watching.